Oh, Ryan, you got 109 miles of range in this Tesla. How do you know that's accurate? Oh, it's 100% accurate. You can trust that with no question. <laughs> totally kidding. <laughs> yeah, so Ryan, there's a story that's been going out around, or several stories uh, about uh, Tesla specifically, but generally electric car range being overly optimistic, not what it is in the real world. And people who buy an electric car for the first time, some Tesla owners, uh, being potentially misled about their range. So. Uh, there's a story in Reuters about this. There's been some different reporting. Consumer Reports recently noticed that Tesla Model Y wasn't meeting its range claims. Tesla's not alone in not meeting its range claims. A lot of electric cars struggle to meet their ratings in different conditions. So I want to talk about, Ryan, today, what exactly affects electric car range, why these EPA numbers, the ranges we see advertised, often aren't accurate, especially for Teslas, um, if they're overly optimistic and what affects them and what people can do about it. Because the reality here is that range is so dependent on a number of things. It's not just a static number. A lot of things affect it. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Definitely. Okay, Ryan, we're driving around downtown in what's an urban setting. And uh, this is basically gonna be the best case scenario for your range in your Tesla or any electric car, right? That's right, we've got warm weather, we're going slow, stop and go traffic. This is ideal conditions to get as much range as possible from the car. Yep, uh, because it's low speed, like you said, fair temperature, there is some traffic, and when we slow down in an electric car, we have regenerative braking, so we're actually gaining some of that uh, energy back from slowing down, unlike you would in a gas car. However, Ryan, uh, these um, range tests that you know we do it out of spec, that the EPA does as part of uh, some of their cycles for their testing, and that uh, outlets like Consumer Reports uh, and others do, Edmunds as well, with electric cars, they are mostly at highway speed because, of course, you're road tripping, you're cruising down the highway, especially in the U.S., going huge distances, and um, that affects range, right? Absolutely, yeah. And to be honest, I actually agree with you uh, and them that uh, the highway range is what's most important. Uh, you're not going to be doing 200, 300 miles around town in a day. Uh, yeah. You could hypermile your Tesla, Ryan, and probably exceed its rated range if this is the only driving we're doing the whole time. Certainly. But, but like you said, most of the times when someone's running down their battery, it's because they're getting somewhere. That's right. So uh, their speed is obvious, and to explain it really broadly, just aerodynamics, you are more than linearly increasing the toll your, uh, on your car's battery the faster you go, uh, basically square resistance, all that as I understand it. Yes, yeah, it's exponential. As, as you go faster, you're using more and more energy, and it has a bigger effect the faster you go. Yeah, there's not much people can do about it, but if it is something that concerns you, you can go a little slower. It's always a tip. I think Teslas will actually advise you do that. Um, but this is where we factor into the car guessing your range, because every car, when it guesses your range, it's not an ironclad guesstimate. The way like battery percentage in cars, okay, it's not perfect, but usually they're broadly accurate. When they tell you your range, it's a total guess, and their methods for doing it are different. So Ryan, in your Tesla, when it says right now, like it says 109 miles, what does that mean? Yes, yeah, so Tesla is uh, a little bit different, and they just use the rated range. So the EPA estimate, and then if I'm at 50%, it'll show me half of the EPA rated range. Yep. The problem with this is that it's not necessarily accurate. Uh, it de it's totally dependent on weather, temperature, road conditions, how fast you're going. All these different factors uh, will significantly affect the range, so it's, it's difficult to totally trust the rated range. Yes, and it's funny because it's a uh, different, most electric cars like Ford's, uh, General Motors ones will factor in your driving style into their range estimates. So you're always going to see that change based off how quickly you're driving, the temperatures, etc. Whereas like you said with Tesla, it's just a linear, okay, here's the rate of range, the percentage of it, here's how many miles. That's right. In one sense, I can see that being useful because it's always going to be the same. You know how to, it's just translating from the percentage. It's not going to change. It's predictable in that way. On the other hand, if you're not used to draining an electric car's battery and what accelerates that, that can catch you by surprise. Absolutely. It's uh, something you need to keep in mind, and uh, I think you bring up a good point. It, it does give you uh, an idea of what it's going to be like at all times. Mm -hmm. um, but I, again, like you said, it's, it's not always perfect, and there's uh, definitely scenarios where you want to be careful. 
a lot of vehicles do have route planning built into them and that will take into effect uh, a lot of times weather elevation a lot of these different factors that have a significant impact on range and it will give you a much more accurate estimate Yes, Tesla does this, the Android-based systems that you see in a Volvo, Polestar, or a General Motors, newer vehicles like a Cadillac Lyric, a Hummer EV, if you're road tripping in that, uh, future ones to come like the Blazer. All of these, uh, like you mentioned, Ryan, do that kind of estimation uh, where they do factor everything in, but you have to tell the car where you're going. And this route planning is really useful for that reason because um, what I found, at least in my Polestar, is yeah it's a lot more accurate when it knows where it's going because it can know exactly okay here's the speed limits on these roads you're probably going to be driving this speed it knows when you're going what the weather is going to be uh like you said the elevation all of those differences are factored in so basically speed is so variable we've talked about how the actual speed you're going sorry range is such a big variable the speed you're going affects it and so does temperature like ryan in the uh, winter this car or any electric car is going to get less range, right? Significantly less. 20, 30, 40% less range at, at times. It's really significant. Yeah, like you'll notice that. And the best way to be prepared is like you mentioned, having that uh, trip monitor um, active in your car for route planning. Now, I think the notable exceptions to this are Hyundai and Kia, the route planners, uh, will estimate battery percentage when you arrive at a destination, but they're not as smart as the others in terms of factoring in all those things, like uh, elevation. I don't think they do that as well. Different car software has to, in my opinion, get better for this to improve. Uh, and this is one big uh, reason that I think we should demand better from the built-in car experience. Because for a gas car, it's not much stress to say, okay, I can expect there's gonna be gas stations everywhere. Uh, no gas cars are having, uh, you know, having to, People aren't depending on the range being 100% accurate. In an electric car, we do. We're stretching it and uh, we're pushing things to the limit. And Car and Driver found in a recent article that it's not just Tesla. A lot of electric cars just don't meet their rated range in the real world a lot of the time. Absolutely, yeah. And one thing on that point of route planning is I recently uh, did a race to Vegas in a Porsche Taycan and that has incredible route planning. It is incredibly accurate. Mm -hmm. It is so comforting to have multiple stops in a row where when I leave the charger, it says I'll be there with 8% and then I arrive with 8%. That just gives you so much peace of mind and it's something that I think all auto manufacturers really should strive to improve and nail. Absolutely. It's really, really super helpful to know exactly what charge you're going to be at when you get to your destination. Like if it's a charger, if it's your house and you're under 10%, that's okay. But if it's somewhere else, then oh no, you might have trouble getting anywhere else if you're in a super low battery charge. So that's helpful. I'm also glad you brought up the Porsche Taycan, Ryan, because I want to talk about these uh, Tesla range stories. Um, you know, the EPA range what does that even mean in, in the first place as i understand it it's actually a real test like it's not made up the manufacturers do have to uh basically put their cars on these rollers or dy dynamometer which simulates the road it's just the cars you know strapped to that uh, and then they set the resistance of those rollers based off the efficiency of the car so they take the car to 80 miles an hour they let it coast down and based off its aerodynamics its tires its wheels all of that um, they'll see how efficiently basically how long it takes to slow down so if it takes longer to slow down it's more efficient if it slows down quicker it's less efficient they factor that into the resistance they roll put it on these rollers a lot of technical details but basically they're doing these real world tests ryan and these tests have multiple steps there's a there's a cycle that simulates the kind of driving we're doing now it's right. urban there's a highway driving cycle i think there's a cold temperature one with heat there's a high temperature one with the AC running, uh, and then there's another higher speed cycle. Uh, so that's what's called the five cycle test, but there's also a two cycle test that's just urban and highway driving. And here's the weird thing. Manufacturers can choose which test they're gonna do. And that's why, Ryan, like a Porsche Taycan or a Tesla Model S may advertise very different ranges, but actually get similar range in the real world because they're using vastly different EPA tests. And at the end of the day, depending on the test you choose, the auto manufacturer gets to choose their adjustment factor. So Tesla, by doing the test that has more cycles, long story short, can say, oh, uh, we want less of an impact on our range because we're doing a test that's more indicative of the real world. Um, so basically, Tesla, it sounds like, is really good at the test. And as a result, their ranges on their cars are better than other people's. 
but that doesn't translate to the real world. Absolutely. Does I that think, make sense? Yeah, I think you explained the EPA cycles and the differences really well. And the, I think what it comes down to is Tesla's very good at running those tests and their numbers are very optimistic mm -hmm. and may, may not necessarily be accurate. Uh, plenty of our range tests show uh, Tesla is not uh, achieving their claimed range. However, we do have some instances where they do. And we also have instances of a lot of other manufacturers over uh, overstating their ranges. Yes, it's not the Tesla's not alone, but I will say generally it does seem like okay, Ford, uh, BMW, especially Porsche, uh, they will uh, be more conservative with their range estimates. But we've hopefully proven in this video to you that there's no ironclad rule to this. There's no one range figure for your car. It's gonna vary, because different cars, Ryan, are also gonna be affected by conditions differently. And a car that's way more aerodynamic and has super efficient, low rolling resistance tires and wheels that are aerodynamic will actually be affected less by speed than a car that doesn't have those. Or a car with a really efficient climate system um, and a really good heat pump might be less affected in the cold. So different cars benefit from different efficiencies. And overall, yes, Tesla's numbers are inflated, but their inflated numbers, even when you account for the real world, are still competitive and class leading in a lot of areas. Absolutely, I, I totally agree with that assessment. Yeah, so we're not here to evaluate, you know, Tesla's in, in the news and kind of comment on Reuters and all these other stories, but I do wanna just stress the importance to people that you can't just go off any manufacturer's rated range. You can watch a uh, shameless plug out of spec reviews, highway range test that you and Kyle do on lots of vehicles where we drive them in a 70 mile an hour highway loop. There's plenty of outlets that test electric car ranges in some kind of determined loop that's not the same as the EPA. Because like we've established, the EPA is a test cycle that's made up of different components and it doesn't reflect the kind of driving you're doing. Your driving is, well, you're driving. It's absolutely unique to you, and it's going to affect the range you're going to get. That's right, definitely. Yeah, so Ryan, that's a uh, lo long advice here, long story, but short advice is hopefully use the trip planning in your car, especially if it's a Tesla, it's fairly good, or Android Automotive and cars that have it. And also, I think, uh, especially in a Tesla, it seems like you might want to get used to looking at the battery percentage and not the miles. Remain. That's right. Yeah, I've actually have it set to percentage usually, and that's just what I look at because I, I think it's a, a better indicator for me. It, it makes more sense. Yes, yeah, so 106 miles is showing us right now. If I touch this, it's going to go to 40%. Um, seems like, yeah, the more you get to know your car, that's how I live in my Polestar. I just look at the percentage. You can see the rate the percentage is dropping down. The miles is an extrapolation of that. The car has to do some math. It's not always going to be accurate in a Tesla or in any car. So hopefully that's all been helpful. Any last points you want to add, Ryan, about ranges, how we should expect them to be in the real world, how it relates to EPA's advertised numbers, all that? Uh, one other thing I, I did want to highlight is we did mention what a lot of people call the guesso meter, which is when uh, it will estimate your range based off of previous driving. Some of those can be very good, but it's worth keeping in mind that uh, if you're going to be changing your driving, it will have a significant effect. For example, if you just spent the past month just driving around town and then you're about to go on a road trip, that estimate may not be accurate. Yes, you're right. Just don't stress too much about that final EPA number. Look up the car, look up tests that we do out of spec and elsewhere to see its actual range. And then also factor in the fact that your range is not gonna be one number. It's gonna be a very a range of number range of ranges <laughs> um, for every car. And so just keep that in mind. Um, hope that's all been helpful. And please let us know any questions you have in the comments. Also, you can email us guide at fspecstudios.com with future video topics and suggestions. I've been Max. This is Ryan. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.